Hi, guys. Good evening. Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you today? Good. And you? I am fine. Okay. Good evening, Alejandro, right? I cannot listen to you. No, I cannot. I'm sorry, I cannot listen to you right now. Katie, are you able to listen to him? Yes, I can listen. Okay. Can you listen to me? Yeah, a little bit better, but super far away. Very, very far away. Yes, Okay, mm, no. I'm sorry, I'm not able to listen. Sorry, I cannot listen. It sounds like it sounds like robot and on the back and very far away. Mm -hmm. Maricela, good evening. How are you? Mi laptop, I don't know who is. Mi laptop, <laughs> good evening. How are you guys? Good evening. How are you? Hello, fine, fine teacher. And you? How Good. are you? Great, how was your day? Um, tired. Mm -hmm. It was tired. I mm -hmm. work a lot today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it raining guys in your houses? I can listen to rain. I don't know if it's raining in your houses. Is it raining right now or no? Not yet. No yet, no yet. But can you listen to the rain coming or are you able to listen to the thunders and the, can you listen to it? No? No. Oh, okay. No, no. Samuel, good evening. Valeria, good evening. How are you guys? Good evening. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Well, welcome guys. So today, hmm, what do you think it's going to be our topic today? Can you pick a guess? Based on the platform, what's gonna be our topic? What do you think it's gonna be our topic, guys? Oh. Hold on, I'm gonna share the sound too. Mm -hmm. Celebration. Mm -hmm. Very good. So today we're going to be talking, we're going to be building up um, vocabulary, okay? So okay. Um, about celebrations. This is vocabulary that I have for weddings, funerals, and a little bit of firm vocabulary.com. But before we start into that, let's watch this small video. And then I want you to start brainstorming. Think of, make a list of five words related to celebrations, okay? To build up vocabulary if you don't know the words in english that's great because the idea is to develop vocabulary in english if you have them in spanish we can develop the words in english um so let's get started um let's going back to the platform it's exercise 3.1 vocabulary okay it's just very short video but let's go over the words really quick think of five words okay flowers fruit punch hi are you ready to begin i want you to follow me and repeat the words as they appear in your screen anniversary cake cards dancing fireworks flowers fruit punch parade presents roast turkey wedding very good remember you may listen to the audio program as many times as you need I'm gonna stop there. Okay, so these are words related to celebrations, but let's brainstorm all together. Um, I'm gonna write here a list of words that you guys come up with, okay? Can you tell me words related to anniversaries, for example? So let's start first with anniversaries. Let's brainstorm. What comes to your mind? 
with anniversaries? Give me words. Anniversary or weddings? Okay, uh, and always what it is. So for example, wedding, anniversary. Yes. One year. Um, okay, year wedding anniversary. You could also say, um, I'm um, sorry, a funeral, I'm sorry, a, no. For anniversary, is it only for weddings or is it for something else? Can we use anniversary for other type of anniversary? Very good, like in a relationship of a couple. Maybe relationship anniversary. Okay, that could be another one. What else? The <laughs> company. Excellent. Company anniversary. Mm -hmm. Every year. Very good. Uh huh. What else? What type of other anniversaries can you think of? Very good. It's when somebody, give me a minute, it's going to start to rain here. <laughs> you can look at my window, <laughs> one of my windows because I closed the other one. Okay, so we have wedding anniversary, relationship anniversary, company anniversary, wow. And also, what other type of anniversary you can think of? Memorial, memorial anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's when somebody passed away, okay, and then we go to church or we do a celebration just to remember that person, okay? That's a memorial anniversary. Mm -hmm. okay. Another one? Uh, get engaged. Very good. Okay. Engagement anniversary. Okay. Engagement anniversary. That's what you call when you get the ring, like, okay? The proposal, uh-huh. You call that a proposal, okay? That's what you call it, proposal. La propuesta, it's the proposal. Mm -hmm. Now, in anniversaries, I can think of, like here in the words, cake, cards, dancing flowers, flowers, fruit punch, parade, party, presents, roasted turkey, maybe it's for Thanksgiving, and then wedding. But what else can you think regarding anniversaries or celebrations in general? Give me words that are not here on the list that you can think of regarding yeah. celebrations. Give me other words. Beer. View. Beer. Like this? View? No. Beer. Spell it. To drink. Ah, okay. Okay. Wine. Beer. Aha. Uh -huh. Or wine. Okay. Or whatever wine. other um you call that beverage yes in general okay so you call this any alcohol type of drink, beverage any, any type of drink <laughs> whether with alcohol or without alcohol you call that beverage mm -hmm. okay um present uh-huh also presents mm -hmm. what else Dancing floor. Okay, dancing. Floor. Okay, another one would be presents. And then aside from presents, when you don't give a gift, what else do you give? You give an envelope, right? It's called yes. envelope present. Either or, it's a right, the present is the one that you actually give in a box, that's a present. But if you give an envelope, that's an envelope present. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, also, gift cards it? are related to this type of gift cards. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Blind blind date. Okay, very good. Blind, blind dates, uh -huh. blind dates. Uh -huh. Okay, but talking about celebration, think about wedding. What words do you know about wedding? Can you tell me? Brainstorm. Weddings. Uh -huh. Flowers. Excellent. Flowers. Okay. What else? Rings. 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 Mm -hmm. 
to you have two types general, of rings right you have engagement ring and you have a wedding ring so you have both right engagement and wedding rings so it's two sometimes not all the times engagement and wedding rings what else made of honor very good wedding. Uh huh. That is called Maid of Honor. I'm going to show you a list really quick. Give me just one minute so I can share this list with you. Can you see this list? Can you guys see my screen? Can you see the Excel list? Yes. Yes. Okay, super. Okay. Okay, going to the list. Let's go to the list. You when, said Excel. I'm sorry? You said Excel. Excel? Yeah, oh. because there, there is no Excel file on screen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me go ahead and give me a minute. Okay, going back to what we were doing. I'm sorry, the the wind was blowing everything inside my room. I had to close another window. <laughs> okay, so going back to our class. So here we have a list of a list in Excel of a couple of vocabulary words. So let's go over a little bit. Oh. We learn a little. I'm gonna share the list, so don't worry. Okay, I will share it. But these are some examples. This is the explanation and an example in a sentence for each word. This list is a list that I have been creating with students in the past, so don't worry. I will share it with you too. For example, the best man is the person that goes with the groom. That's how you call it, groom. The novio, that's how you call it, groom. So the best man, how many best men does a groom have? Do you know how many? How many best men does a groom have? God bless you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> How many best men? Uh, one. A groom, un well, novio, the groom in a wedding. How many? The girl has how many and the boy has how many? Groom, best men. One or two. Okay, one or two, very good. Then we have blooming romance is when the relationship is like in the honeymoon period. That's a blooming romance. A bow tie is corbatin. So you have the tie, but you have the corbatin like a chonga. If that's a bow tie, okay? Okay. Then we have the bride, which is the girl. Okay. Now, the best man is for the groom, but the bridesmaid is for the bride, okay? Yes. A best man is for the groom and it's for the groom and the br a bride maid is for the bride the girls that the a bridesmaid of the rings of the lace of all the different accessories right then you have the flower girls that are usually little girls right yes a gown so the maid of honor doesn't exceed uh, what happens is that the maid of honor it's just one person, but the bridesmaid is like the, it's like the, all the girls with a different okay. purpose, like a lace, like the rings, like the, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. And then we have the flower girls, which usually are the little girls, right? Those are the flower girls. A gown, this one, a gown is, a gown is a special dress, a wedding dress, or like a fancy dress that you use for weddings, okay? That's okay. a gown. And then the groom, it's the person who's getting married, what we were talking about. Then we have honeymoon, right? Where would you like to go on a honeymoon? Bora Bora, 
uh, Santorini, um, Copacaban, I don't know. Where would you like to go on your honeymoon, guys? Greece. Greece, okay, Santorini, yes. maybe. Uh -huh. yes. Me too. Uh huh. Santorini, okay, very good. Then yeah. the reception venue is the place where you, the party is at, okay? whether it's a hotel, so that's the reception venue, the place where the party and celebration will take place, okay? That's the, the reception, that's how you call it. A tuxedo, it's a formal dressing for the grooms, right? For the person who's getting married, the men. A vow is a paper that you write and you tell the person when you're about to get married. Those are the vows, los votos, nupciales, that's, those are vows. Paper. Like the paper, how huh, that? Dear John, this day I want to tell you. Okay. Uh, okay. That's those are the vows. Then we have okay. the wedding, which is the wedding is everything. Everything in the cel, including the celebration. Mass is misa. Okay. By the way, a wedding usually has mass or a service. If it's right, if it's a service, if it's a different a religion, it's a service. If it's Misa is mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have a wedding organizer or planner, which is the person that helps you organize your wedding, right? That you sometimes you pay or it's your best friend or somebody very close to your family. Right? So these are some of the words for wedding. I'm not going to share all of them because I just wanted to share like the most important ones related to the main characters in a wedding. Now, Going back to, to celebrations, what else can you think of other type of celebrations? So we have weddings, we have birthday celebrations, we have anniversaries. What other type of celebrations do we have? Mm, baptism. I'm sorry? Baptism, I, I don't know what I, baptism? Mm, baptism. Baptism. Yes. Okay. baptism. Bap Baptism. Uh -huh. Baptism. Mm -hmm. Baptism. First communion. Mm -hmm. First mm. communion too. Okay. What else? What else? Graduation. I'm sorry? Graduation. Okay. Maybe, uh -huh. Maybe graduations. Very good. Graduations, uh huh. What else? I cannot listen to you. Can you tell me what he's saying? I cannot listen to him. Please, can you listen to him? No, he, he said something, but I couldn't really listen. Or you can type it if, or text it on the on the group. Okay, here, so we can read you. Graduations, any type of ceremony. It's a celebration too, like when you present a baby to the church or to the service, or um, when when you have um, also a, you want to celebrate baby shower. A, uh -huh, very good, a baby shower. Uh huh. A baby shower is another celebration. Excellent. Uh huh. What else? Pre sixteen. Sweet 15 in El Salvador, sweet 16 in other countries. Mm -hmm. The quinceañera parties. Uh, sweet 15 here and sweet 16 in other countries because they don't celebrate 15, they celebrate 16. Another one? How, how do you say piñata? Piñatas. There's no word for piñata, it's just piñata. The T becomes an R because it's a Mexican word. Mm -hmm. Very good. Bachelorette party. What is that? Can you explain? Do you guys know what a bachelorette party is? It's a uh, um, before. Uh, 
No se oye, ¿por qué te cambiaste? Ah. <laughs> bachelorette party and bachelor party. Bachelorette is despedida soltera and bachelor is despedida soltero. So one is for girls and the other one is for, for boys, okay? So that's it. Both are the, that's the name for them. Very good, very good, super. Okay, so these are some words related to celebrations. Then there's a many other words that are related to celebration. But let's try to do the pronunciation for this ones, okay? The ones that we have here. For example, this one is baptism, okay? The pronunciation is baptism. Baptism. This one is not first, it's always first. First communion, okay? Then we have gradu graduations, okay? Gra the D becomes like a ju graduations, okay? Graduations. And then we have, uh, well, any type of ceremony, baby showers, like showers, baby showers, sweet 15, sweet 16, piñatas, bachelorette party, and bachelor party, okay? That's the pronunciation for this one. I hope you can practice them too. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Okay, this was like a little warm-up activity that um, we were gonna get started, but now we're gonna get started with a, another grammatical topic. What do you guys know about relative clauses? What can you tell me about relative clauses? What do you know about relative clauses? What are relative clauses? Do you know? No. Okay, so today we're gonna be learning about relative clauses with time, but I'm gonna show you, the platform only shows you one, but I'm going to show you all of them. Let's look at the video on the platform, which is really quick, and it's only going to show you one relative clause. And then I have a presentation in where I'm going to show you all the rest of you, that way you can have that information. And then I'm gonna share the PowerPoint at the end of the class for you to have it, okay? Okay, so relative clauses of time. It's a very small video. Let's pay attention. Tell me if you listen. Hello, before you watch the video, I want. Can you listen to it? Yes. Yes. I want you to know what a relative clause is, so pay attention. A relative clause is used to define or identify the noun that precedes them. In this case, we will talk about the relative pronoun when because we want to talk about time. Relative clauses of time. Thanksgiving is a day when North Americans celebrate the harvest. February 14th is the day when people give cards to the ones they love. New Year's Eve is a night when I have fun with my friends. What is a relative clause of time? A relative clause of time refers to a time, date or moment previously mentioned. They are usually introduced by the verb be. Right after the verb be, a noun phrase may follow. Example, the day, the month, the year, the season. And because we're referring to time, we will use when. Take a look at the structure and work with us on the following examples. Date plus verb be plus a noun phrase plus a relative clause of time when plus complement. If we study the first example, Valentine's Day is a day when people give presents to their loved ones. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Can you come up with other examples with the celebrations we just mentioned? So here we have three examples. Valentine's Day is a day when. That's going to be our structure, okay? Or um, weddings, wedding, a wedding day is a day when, okay? Um, Thanksgiving Day is a day when. So it's like to give an explanation of something, okay? Summer is the season when. December is the month when. So can you come up with other examples related to celebrations? Can you give me two or three more examples? Mm -hmm. Please, who wants to help me? Father's Day is okay. the day when celebrate the fathers. 
a father. Okay, Father's Day is a day when celebrate when we when we celebrate fathers. Our, our fathers. fathers. Okay, our fathers. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Father's Day. Anybody else? What about Thanksgiving? Can you give me an example with Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is a day when we celebrating family. Celebrate with our family. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. And one last one. Christmas. Boy. Christmas is a day, is a holiday when we celebrate the this the is family birth. okay when we celebrate birth of Jesus Jesus of Jesus, <laughs> Jesus birth. birth okay if you see I'm not putting this is something very interesting and I want to explain to make a parenthesis if you notice I'm not adding Jesus apostrophe s but I'm adding Jesus and then at the end the apostrophe it, it's the same. It indicates possession. Jesus' birth. Okay. Why? Because Jesus ends with S. So for words that are ready and with S, you don't have to put apostrophe S because okay. it already ends in S. So the apostrophe goes at the end. That's like a little tip that I can give you in case whenever you see this topic, you already have it in mind. Say, ah, now I understand. So whenever you see it this way or the other way, that's why. Okay. It's when, it, okay. when a word ends with an S, then you put it at the end to demonstrate possession. Okay, okay super, thank you. Super, guys. Very good. Okay. Okay, so this is a little bit of the presentation. Okay, these are some examples that they were giving us when using when. Let's finish watching the video and then I'm going to give you my presentation for you to have an idea which others are the relative clauses. What are the other relative clauses that we're missing? Okay. Valentine's Day is the date, is is the verb be, a day, noun phrase, when, relative clause of time, people give presents to their loved ones would be the complement. Go on reading the other examples and try to understand them before you're asked to do the exercises. We want you to finish the following sentence using a relative pronoun when in our discussion box. Ready? Mother's Day is a day. A wedding anniversary is a time. December is a month. Do you think you can come up with an example for each December one? December is a month. Let me go back. To Ready? You. Mother's Day is... So, Mother's Day is a day. Give me an example. We celebrate all, all mothers. Very good. Mm -hmm. Independence Day is a day? Yeah. Give me an example, Anthony. Like Independence Day is a day where we celebrate uh, the independence of our country. Very good. The independence of our country. Mm -hmm. It's a day. A wedding anniversary is... Now, give me an example with a wedding anniversary is a time. Mm -hmm. When? Uh, when couples celebrate their wedding. Mm -hmm. Okay. When couples celebrate their wedding. Very good. It's a time. December is a month. And the last one. December is a month. It has plenty of holidays. <laughs> <laughs> and that people love to take vacations on December. Like, like everybody yeah. likes to take, take vacation on December. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so this was a little bit of the presentation. As when we come back from my presentation, we're gonna be doing, you're gonna, I'm gonna pair you up so you do the knowledge check um, exercise 3.4.
But before doing that, let's go with my presentation. That way we get to see a little bit more on relative clauses. Let's go ahead and get started. Ready? Okay, so relative clauses. <clears throat> what are relative clauses? We were talking, right? Phrases. Relativity? Yes. Clause? No. In his case, right? He's related to relativity, but not to clauses. In our next example, mm -hmm. he's related to clause, but he's not related to relativity, right? So in this case, they don't match. Now, relative clauses, we're going to be using this very popular figure. What's his name? Oh, Johnny. Okay. Johnny. Very good. Johnny, the Pirates of the Caribbean. Famous, right? Imagine a girl is talking to Johnny. You want to ask or you want to know who she is and ask a friend whether he knows her. So you could say, a girl is talking to Johnny. Do you know her? Or do you know the girl? But that's a little bit complicated. So we can change that to a more simple way of asking, right? So what could we say? It would be easier to use a relative clause. How could we unify this? A girl is talking to Johnny. Do you know the girl? Let's find out how we can structure this. So we have. We can put, put both pieces of information into a sentence, right? Um, start with the most important thing you want to know who the girl is. So you would say, do you know the girl? Who, because it's talking about a person, right? Your friend cannot know which girl you're talking about. So you need to put in, in the additional information the girl is talking to Johnny. So you use the girl only in the first part of the sentence. In the second part of, you replace it with the re relative pronoun. The relative pronoun for people is who, okay? So the final sentence would be, do you know the girl who is talking to Johnny? So every time we wanna know or we wanna relate, use a relative clause for asking, a, a, and relating to people, we're always going to use who, okay? Do you know who John Black is? Okay, who's John Black, do you know? Do you know who John Black is, no? Do you know who King Flip is, guys? Or do you know who is King Flip? Do you guys know, yes or no? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, yes. He was a very famous, what, rapper? Or Salvadoran rapper? Right, I think. Okay, do you know who is John Black, by the way? No? No. He's, he's, <gasps> he's not a Joe singer. Black. Meet Joe Black. Oh, that's yes. a movie. That's a movie. Uh -huh, ah, yeah. a movie. It's okay. A movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's staring with Brad Pitt, I remember. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, super old school. Okay, so do you know the girl who <laughs> no, is. No, he's not old school teacher. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> is that, you know, I'm 40, so I feel like. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, we use who for people. Now, let's take a look at other examples. Defining relative clauses or are often used in definitions. For example, a physicist is someone who studies the universe, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me another profession and give me, let's try to use examples with who. Mm -hmm. Give me another one. A scientist, an architect, someone who, and then, uh-huh. Or use your professions to give me examples. Mm -hmm. Come up with one example using who? Um, the doctor is someone who help help us. Uh, 
when helps. when who helps patients uh -huh. yes who helps um to feel better okay uh doctor is someone who helps patients feel better very good okay give me another okay. prof another example with another profession please an economist is someone who knows about money. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. An economist is someone who knows about money. Very good. Mm -hmm. Another one using your profession. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, architect is someone who designed the houses. An architect is someone who houses. designs houses. Very good. Mm -hmm. Give me an example using a an engineer. An engineer is someone who depend engineer engineer. Yeah. Computation. Okay, or, maybe an engineer is someone who mm -hmm. what do engineers do? What do they do? Uh -huh. Very good. Okay, an engineer is someone who resolves problems. Very good. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Hopefully they do. Okay. A taken is my favorite eat. <laughs> My favorite food. A chicken uh -huh. is. It's a. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with another one. Uh, the Lamborghini is. Mm. What is the Lamborghini? Let me go back. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me go back here. We missed this one. I know. I'm not going to see it. I know why. Oh, okay. We missed this one. We use who okay. for people. We use which for animals and things. We use whose for possessions. We use whom for pronouns for people. Okay, and we use that for people, animals, and things. But it's important to know that who is for people only, which is for animals and things, okay? Whose is for possessions, whom it's pronoun for people, and that is a pronoun for people, animals, and things. For example, I don't like the table that stands in the kitchen, okay? So whenever you're giving a reason, you use that. Whenever you're talking about a person who has, okay, whom I was invited to the professor, whom I met at the conference, okay? I was invited by the professor, whom I met at the conference, okay? Instead of whose is possessive, and this is just pronoun. One is the, that's the difference between this one and this one. One is a possessive and the other one's just a pronoun. Now, in this occasion, we're just taking a look at time. Is time here? Is the exercise that we were doing here, yes or no? Hmm? Guys, is when here? No, right? So it's not included in this list. Reason why, I wanted to show you the other relative pronouns that exist. But right now, we're only going to focus on relative pronouns for time. So what we're going to do right now is um, I want you to pair up, and I want you to do the exercise on the platform with when, okay? And then I'm going to have a final exercise. So please accept the invitation. And I'm going to pair you up. So we have 10. I'm going to make pairs. I have 10 students, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. OK, super. See you in a bit. Work on the exercise, please, for relative clauses on your platform.
Hello. Okay, Hello. my laptop. I don't know who my laptop is. What's my laptop? I'm going to change you, Flor, because there's no one here, okay? Okay. I think there is people had parties with family and friends. Me too. Yes. Yes, this is the answer. And the last one, people sometimes. I ah, no, no, no. It's okay. April yes. Full day April full days is a day when um, people sometimes fly street on friends. The last one. What's the meaning April Fools? April Fool is a whole celebration in United States. Uh, okay. Ap I April April Fools is we're gonna be talking about that right now in a bit. But April Fools is like the island de los inocentes. <laughs> but in, ah, in April. Okay. So okay. they play jokes on people. Ah okay. It's correct. Uh, the answer. <laughs> Okay, the number three. Oh, number three is May, May and June are the month when um, many young adults choose to get married, maybe? Many young adults chose to, to get married, yes. Okay. I think. And today is a day when people express their love to someone. Oh. Number five, every day is day when people in many countries honor workers. Honor workers, yes. Okay. February is the month when? Okay. It is um, Brazilian celebrate carnival. Carnival, okay. We check. We answer. I have problem with my internet. It is slowly. <laughs> Very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> really? Ah, we have 10. Yes, it's called? Yes. All? Great All job, guys. Oh. Great job. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Okay. Okay. Shop answers. <laughs> <laughs> We finish. <laughs> okay, okay, great job. Super. I'll see you in a bit. Go out. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Just give me a minute, please. Okay, guys, welcome back. So we're going to go over the answers together and tell me if you have them all correct. Okay, so number one, New Year's Day is a day when people have parties with friends and family, right? You have it correct? Super. <clears throat> Our next one. April Fools, by the way, it's like Dia de los Inocentes on April in the United States is a celebration. It's um, when people sometimes play tricks on friends, okay? That's what happens on April Fools. And it all started with a joke uh, back in the days when somebody sent an empty box on April. 
and it became like so viral everybody started doing it and that's how april fool started like kind of like dia de los inocentos in november or december here in the country so it's kind of like that so they play tricks and jokes just on april fools not a specific date it all depends on i think it's like the fourth thursday if i'm not mistaken i i will rem i will go back and i'll let you know when exactly may and june are months when many young adults choose to get married yes or no you have that correct one yeah okay and then we have um valentine's day is a day when people express their love to someone okay <clears throat> number five is labor day is a day when people in many countries honor workers and number six is february is the month when brazilians celebrate carnivals okay now did you guys get a good score on this one yeah yes yeah okay all of you had a good score super okay no. so our last activity for today is I have a video prepared of strange celebrations are, that are still happening around the world. Do you know, can you tell me some celebrations that you know? Mm -hmm. Or unusual festivals around the world that you know or that you happen to know? Nice. No. Like unusual celebrations. Mm. Okay, so let me share. Let's go ahead and find. These are like some of the best festivals in the world. Okay, they're called ten unusual celebrations <coughs> and na and national customs. Okay. Let me show you. Just give me a minute here. And think of other ones, okay? The Harbin Festival is the largest snow and ice festival, which features carvings towering over 20 feet in height and full-size buildings made from gigantic ice blocks. Every year, people build incredible things out of ice and snow, decorating them with lights and lasers. So everything that you see in this festival is made out of ice. So it's a festival, it's an ice festival. So they come up with ice sculptures and you know they light them up like the one we're see looking at right now. Beautiful, right? Yeah. Right. Holi is a spring festival also known as the Festival of Colors. It's an ancient Hindu religious festival which starts on the night before Holi when people gather, sing, and dance. The next morning starts with a carnival of colors where everyone plays, chases, and colors each other with dry powder and colored water with some carrying water guns and colored water-filled balloons for their water fight. The Albuquerque Balloon Festival is the largest gathering of hot air balloons in the world. Over 750 hot air balloons take to the skies. Some are illuminated at night, and some, uniquely shaped, once the balloons are let off, they paint the sky with their vibrant colors and hues, making it a beautiful sight to look at. Burning Man is an annual event when up to 48,000 people gather in Nevada's Black Rock Desert to create art and express their individuality. It takes its name from the ritual burning of a large wooden effigy, which is set alight on Saturday evening. This is a, one of the biggest 
celebrations in in the United States. So people gather in that desert. They make um, they make a statue or something significant in the center where they gather, and they make it out of wood. So when it's ready, then they lit it up for it to actually burn down. So that's what the entire festival or carnival or celebration is all about. And a lot of people gather. It started with a few people, but then a lot of people gather in the desert and they camp there and they stay there like for, they have like a long weekend celebration when they do this. Ping Shi Lantern Festival was originally celebrated to ward off the evil and disease from the town. The Sky Lanterns were released originally to let others know that the town was safe. These lanterns are decorated with wishes and released into the sky, magically decorating the sky into a sanctuary of lights. Over a million people invade Pamplona to participate in the San Fermin Festival. Those brave enough and willing to get potentially horned to the chest participate in the running of the bulls during the event. Every year over 200 people are injured. Almost most injuries are contusions due to falls and are not that serious. The Carnival tradition dates back over 900 years. It was the one time during the year where there were no bounds. Everybody was free to do things desired all year without any guilt thanks to the Mass. During the Carnival, Venice comes alive with masked Venetians and tourists. Oktoberfest is the largest annual beer festival held in Munich. It's a 16-day festival with more than 6 million participants from around the world. An interesting fact about the Oktoberfest, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, is that it all started at the end of September, back in the days, and it was, the Oktoberfest was created by the king to celebrate the wedding of his daughter with the prince. So it was a three-day celebration and there was no alcohol involved, so no beer. So then this festival, you know, went along the years and people started integrating beer to it and then, you know, food festivals, etc. But the first, first Oktoberfest was at the end of September. It was a very long festival and it was in honor to the wedding of the prince and to the prince and princess that were getting mar married at that time. So that's an interesting fact about this. Imagine being surrounded by these yeah. traditional huge glasses of beer and serving them are the beautiful and sensational waitresses. Commemorating the uprising that marked the beginning of the French Revolution, Bastille Day is the biggest national holiday in France. While there isn't a city, town, or village throughout the country that doesn't do something to honor French independence, the best place to celebrate is in Paris. In many ways, Mardi Gras reputation precedes itself. If you want a party like there's no tomorrow, New Orleans is where you belong. Mardi Gras is a crazy celebration before Lent, also known as the last day before giving up sinful pleasure. Okay guys, so I hope you like this video. The idea with this video is for you to make 
uh, I'm going to send a link and I want you to make questions with, I'm sorry, sentences with relative clauses with each celebration, okay? So you make one with each and it's up to you if you send it to me on WhatsApp and I can revise it to check on how you guys are writing. This is a very good practice, a different practice from the ones we have been doing with the worksheets. That way you can still practice uh, relative clauses with when, okay? So thank you so much for joining today. It's time um, to leave now. Just, yes. just one question. Um, sure. How many sentences? Just one or? <clears throat> no, make one. My suggestion as an exercise is for you to make one with each celebration that you saw on the video. So I will send you the link and you can make one. So Mardi Gras is a celebration when? Da, da, da. So the idea is for you to practice the relative clause with when. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, at the time we, we, we post that on the WhatsApp group, uh, no, we have post to post to just, just one or? You make them all, if you want to yeah. make them all. If, if you do it on a notebook, just take a picture and you can send it directly to me. Mm -hmm. Or post it on the group, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Super. you. Super. You're welcome, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Talk to you tomorrow, okay? Okay. okay. Good, Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, guys.